I'm going to assume that if you're watching this video, you already know why you would use environment variables in your Quasar application. So let's just dive right in and I'll show you how to do it using Quasar. So let's say Quasar, create, and we'll just call this .env because that's the name of the extension that we'll be using. And I'll probably just press enter for just about everything here. Yeah, pretty much just leave it as normal because we're only going to be using the extension. Sweet, that's done. Let's cd into dot env and then we'll open that in Visual Studio Code. All right, so I can cross out of this now and let's open up our console and we'll say Quasar extension. This is how we add extensions, add. And now it's in the Quasar namespace, which actually tells us that it's an official Quasar extension and it's called .env. So let's go ahead and pull that in and then it's going to ask us a few questions. What is the name of your .env that you will be using for development builds? So for our environment variables that are in development, what's the name of that file going to be? And I'll just call that .development.env. And then for production, we'll call it .production.env. Now, what name would you like to use for your common root object? So let me just open up the index page here so I can show you something. If we have an environment variable called API underscore URL, then by default, we can access that by going into process.env.api underscore URL. However, if we add a root object and we call that, for example, Quasar, then we would access it this way. So let's just imagine we answered Quasar to this question. Process.env.quasar.api underscore URL. You can almost think of this like a namespace for your Quasar-related environment variables. So anyway, that's what that means. We're going to leave it at none so that we can access our environment variables the simpler way. Okay, create your .env files for you. Why not? We'll say yes to that. Now, for security, would you like your .env files automatically added to git ignore? Why would they ask us that? The reason is often people put secret information inside of their .env files, especially if you're doing a lot of fancy SSR stuff where you're doing like authentication uh, on the server side. And so you might have some secrets sitting inside your .env file. Now, if you do plan on putting secret information in there, then absolutely answer yes to this question. You never ever want to commit uh, secret information, for example, um, API keys into version control. We're going to answer no, because I'm not going to be committing a sensitive information. All right, there we go. It's gone ahead and created those files for us. And let's go ahead and just do an example. So if I jump into a development and I'll say Quasar dev here, just get that going while I'm up around here. This is our environment variables file. We've got a simple example using a port. So I'll cross out of all of that. This is how easy it is to define an env variable. API underscore URL, usually it's in all capitals with underscores like this. And let's set that to HTTP and we'll say localhost and maybe that's at 9090, okay? So in development, that might be our API URL because we might be running our own API server. So I'll go ahead and save that. Now, if I copy that and go down to production and paste it in there, on our production server, we're probably going to have something different, different like this, uh, api.my-site.com, for example. Okay, so how do we use these environment variables now? I'll show you how that works. If we go to index.view, and I come up here and get rid of all of that, throw a div in there, and how about we say API underscore URL? This is how we actually go ahead and grab that. We'll put a computed property in here called API underscore URL. And now remember, in here, we called it API underscore URL with all capitals. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that. And what we can do now is say return process.env dot API underscore URL. That's how we grab our environment variables. So save that. Now notice that it's not showing up. That's because environment variables are set when you start your development server. So I'm going to have to close the server and start it up again. Cool. And there we go, now it shows up. So how about that production variable? Well, in order to show you how that works, I'm going to say quasar build 
to build this application. And when you build your application, it's going to automatically start using your production environment variables, which is exactly what you'd want. Because if it's been built, then it's not development anymore. It's usually then going to be in production. So now if I list the files here and I jump into dist, as in distribution, and then we jump into SBA because by default, it creates an SBA application. We can actually say Quasar serve here. That's created a server for us, which is sitting at 4,000 ports. So I have a control click this. Notice that we're now using that different environment variable. So on production, it will be set to api.mysite.com. But on local development, we're going to be using the local version of the API URL. And before we finish up, I just want to thank Jeff for building this extension. Check out some of Jeff's extensions. It's absolutely insane. He's got one, which is the Q calendar extension, and I use it at work. It is just mind boggling what he's been able to accomplish, what he's been able to build using Quasar extensions. That thing is just, I don't even want to think about what it would take to build something that complicated. So thank you so much, Jeff, for all your help in the Quasar community. And I'll see you guys in the next video.